Good morning, people. I've been gone for a while, but I'm back now, and today I'll be reviewing the Asa Aspire 515. Model number will be on your screen now. You can get one factory furbit from Asa for $380 as of the making of this video. Link will be in the description below. If there are any particular sections you want to jump to, timestamps will be below. Also, if you like what I do here, hit the like and subscribe or support the channel by donating with the buy me a coffee link also in the description below. Let's get into the review. This laptop has a 45 watt octa-core Intel Core i5-13420H that boosts up to 4.6 GHz. It has Intel UHD graphics with a max frequency of 1.4 GHz. RAM is 16GB of LP DDR5 memory running at 4800 mega transfers and it has a 1TB PCIe Gen 4 NVMe SSD. For display, it has a 15.6 inch IPS touchscreen with a resolution of 1080p. Here's the audio at 80%. The stereo speakers are down firing, they get loud enough but it lacks any complexity, I'd say they are average. The keyboard is backlit and chiclet style with a numpad and it has a really nice oversized trackpad. For ports on the left side it has a power port, a HDMI 2.1 port and a USB A 3.2 Gen 1 port. On the right side it has a Kensington lock, another USB A Gen 1 port and an audio combo jack. If you noticed that an important port was missing, then you have a keen eye. This laptop has no USB-C ports and it's the first thing I noticed when I took it out of the box. I took a peek inside to see what was upgradable in this laptop and it's kinda what I expected. The RAM chips are on board and the only changeable items were the Wi-Fi slash Bluetooth combo card and the 1TB 2230 sized M.2 NVMe SSD. Power is provided to this laptop by a 90 watt barrel tip charger. This is the only way to charge it as it has no USB-C port that could have provided power delivery. The battery in this laptop is 53 watt hours and in my YouTube playback test it lasted about 5 and 3 quarter hours with the display brightness at 50% and the power mode set to balanced. Let's get into the benchmarks. Cinebench R23 gave us a multi-core score of 86.95 and a single core score of 1484. 3D Mark Firestrike had a score of 32.26. For the PC gaming test, I used the Division 2. It was set to 1080p with low settings and the frame rate was stable at 30 FPS in the open world and would go as high as 45 in enclosed spaces. Acer seems to have designed a budget laptop that doesn't compromise too badly on build quality. The plastics are decent and the hinge seems to be sturdy. The only issue I'm noticing is that the top cover and the palm rest are painted and over time with usage I'm not sure how this will hold up. If it's similar to the paint job on some HP and Dell laptops I've encountered, I don't expect it to look too pretty with time, unless you take special care not to scratch the paint. The biggest concern I have with this laptop is the lack of a USB-C port. There is no reason for a modern laptop to be released without having a USB-C port in this day and age. Acer really dropped the ball by making this decision and to be honest this would be a deal breaker for me. Outside of those issues, this is still a good laptop for the price if you can live without a USB-C port. The backlit keyboard and large trackpad feels nice to use day to day. The Intel i5-13420H paired with LPDDR5 RAM impressed me. It was in between the Ryzen 5 7000 and the Ryzen 7 7000 in terms of its fire strike score and it shows with it being able to play hours of the Division 2 at 1080p comfortably above 30fps. 
Although if the Ryzen's were paired with DDR5 instead of DDR4 that I tested it with, I'm sure it'd blow this Intel i5 out of the water. RAM speed really matters when it comes to these APUs. I would say minimum 16 gigs on DDR5 if you have aspirations of gaming or 3D applications. Thanks for watching this review of the Acer Aspire 515. I'll see you in the next one. God bless.